welcome to Watching for a Friend, where I watch movies and shows because I love them and let you know whether it's worth watching or not. Now, I do want to take a moment to say thank you because I reached 50 subscribers. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. And thank you so much for everybody that has subscribed to me so far. Um, I've actually surpassed 50 subscribers at this time, and it just makes me happy because I'm like, whoa, it's like 50 people outside of my house <laughs> that want to see me talk about movies and TV shows. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for those of you who have subscribed and are returning to this video. And as always, for those of you who are new, I really hope you enjoy this and stay till the end. And let's go on and get into this review. So this one is going to be my reaction to season four of Insecure. And this is episode five. We are officially mid season now. Yes, I'm so excited. Um, about this episode. So first I will do my initial reaction uh, to tonight's episode just because overall I have like a general good feeling. I knew this week was going to be really juicy, especially since last week was so low key. I really feel like Issa represented for Cali. <laughs> like she represented so hard for California. She represented for LA in particular, uh, but I felt like it was very, very California through and through. For those of you who don't know, I am a California native. Um, I'm not from Southern California. I'm from Northern California, Oakland to be exact. Uh, but we share a lot of the same issues with gentrification. Um, Oakland has been pretty much completely gentrified and LA is definitely um, on its way to being almost completely gentrified as well. So I feel like this whole season is kind of this love letter to California. California is known for its diversity and that's being driven out. So I do feel like Issa, you know, it's been something that she's been showing throughout the entire series, but this season in particular, she's really bringing that to the forefront. Let's keep California diverse. And let's not get rid of our black and brown communities and whitewash them and I really appreciate this so <laughs> with that comes a lot of issues and uh, some of those came to the forefront with this uh, with this blog party so we're gonna talk about that okay so as I suspected Nathan's back <laughs> And in all honesty, I feel the same way about Nathan that I feel about Lawrence. I feel like we need some fresh meat up in here. I don't think <laughs> that he should should settle for Lawrence or Nathan. I really do feel like if she can maintain the friendship at, friendships with them as they are, that's great. But I honestly think that we need to bring in some new blood. <laughs> We are trying to bring in the new, the good vibes only. She does not need to backtrack. I knew Nathan would be back uh, within the next two episodes. I predicted within the next two episodes um, and I suspected that he was gonna show up at the block party and he did. I thought it was going to be a surprise to Issa so I'm glad that she wasn't you know, caught off guard by it and that that didn't cause drama. We'll talk about him in a little bit. Now, Andrew is really proving to be mature and such a great communicator. We see this when he and Molly, Molly is contemplating whether she should even go to the block party, seeing as she and Issa are on bad terms. I thought she came so far last week and um, this week, ah, it's such a complex relationship that she and Issa have. But Andrew is a voice of reason and I do appreciate that Andrew is really taking a step back from Molly's drama. He doesn't get caught up in her drama. He always is kind of on the outside like, are you really, you know, maybe you should be taking a different approach. And he is a voice of reason. So I do appreciate that. And I think if we think about relationships, you need somebody that's going to balance you out rather than somebody that's going to hype you up and be like, yeah, she ain't, not, you know. Um, so I'm glad that he's not getting involved in the drama. I'm glad that he's taking a step back. I'm glad that he's taking a mature stance on it. And he continues to do that throughout the episode. And that's what Molly needs. Hopefully she'll learn something. Condola, condola, condola. <laughs> Whatever her name is at this point. <laughs> I, oh, she's weak. 
<laughs> she got weak so fast. Um, Issa, you know, confronted her, not in a, a in an aggressive way, but Issa confronted her asking her, you know, why she's been ghosting, why she's taken a step back. And she's just like, oh, because I broke up, you know, you know, me and Lawrence broke up. I was just so disappointed in her. I just was like, you know, you haven't been dating him that long let your business fall by the wayside um and yeah so bye condola we <laughs> we're over her i i guess they had her do a graceful exit i really am disappointed that they even put her in this series you know what i feel like condola's storyline was as useless as that school storyline they had in season two I was not a fan of like the school principal and that whole storyline in the middle school in the high school I wasn't a big fan of that and I feel like with Condola just kind of like exiting stage left in in episode five I'm like why did you guys put us through all this for for nothing I don't really know what it did to move the plot forward either I think the only thing I could think of is that she made Lawrence realize how much he wanted to be with Issa um, and how much fun Issa was because Condola is so laid back and boring um, so that's what I think I'm just disappointed with that whole storyline hopefully y'all could do better y'all could do a lot better than that so i'm glad that we spent the majority of the episode at this block party that we've been hearing about again this was an ode to la so kelly <laughs> doing this english accent <laughs> to them falling for it and then everybody just having to go with it was hilarious i thought i love that amal was trying to call her out on it in front of him and she was just playing off it she's like oh yes i from south central london <laughs> i was dead and i love that they had all the black people show up to the event late <laughs> and then Issa even said under her breath this is when i want to come <laughs> and i'm like we know when to show up and show out <laughs> and the event did get funner as the evening went on because of all the black people showed up late so back to molly and isa molly is always trying to talk to isa at the wrong time she tried to talk to isa in the middle of this event so i was just so frustrated with molly's reaction to all of this and i was like why does she keep trying to talk around this time and even andrew mentioned it he was like you know this takes a lot of work to put something like this together to me that makes sense why you guys have been off and why she hasn't had time for you because look at all of this and molly still had a hard time admitting it and i was like what the heck why can't she just be happy for isa i don't understand why molly's being such a hater i'm on this emotional roller coaster right <laughs> and i'm invested now so Oh, we had a cameo from Thug Yoda. Yes. You know, he was very impactful in seasons one and two. So I'm glad that they still have him making his cameos here and there. Now I will, the award for the most random scene <laughs> goes to the old man and the little girl dancing on the stage. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> friends had to help him up. I was so confused. I was like, what is this? <laughs> Why? Please. If that is a reference, I really need somebody to explain this reference to me. Please explain this reference to me because I was dead. I was like, what am I looking at right now? It's so random. So if you know why they threw that scene in or if it was just to make us laugh let me know in the comments below thank you i i i'm thanking you in advance okay so here's the part where they really took us on an emo emotional roller coaster ride okay so they start doing the wobble and isa joins in she you know by being prodded by her assistant and her and molly were having a blast doing the wobble you thought everything was going well you're like okay good like that's all we need we just need to like party together right? after that i was like okay good like i was like maybe we went on this emotional roller coaster and nothing's going to happen so then andrew says that nathan asked him to hook isa up with 
Vince Staples as the headliner. Or she gets mad at Issa because she feels like Issa went behind her back after she told her she wasn't trying to involve the two. And this is where it got so dramatic and so messy. And this is where Molly lost so many points <laughs> for me. Confronts Issa at this block party. Um, at the in the middle of this block party, <laughs> and goes off on her. And at one point, I was like, "Oh, are they about to fight? Are they about really about to fight?" <laughs> I thought they were going to lay hands on each other, uh, but it was broken up when somebody said that they thought there was a gun. And, but they like were throwing daggers left and right. It was getting really heated. But that was so frustrating, the whole argument. I was just like, Molly, can it not be about you for two minutes? And, you know, they both had good points on either side. They both had like their own perspective. And I don't know how they are going to come back from this because if that was my friend I wouldn't be I would be like you know I think it's time to like I I'm not mad at you but I'm not gonna be able to like be close like this ever again and the thing that makes me even more mad is that Nathan owed Issa right like it's nothing for Nathan to ask his roommate they Nathan's known Andrew way longer and Molly wouldn't even know Andrew if it wasn't for Issa and Nathan. This was a way for him to get back into her good graces and show her that he still, you know, cares a lot about her success. Um, and so I actually thought that that was a good way for Nathan to show that he had her back and it had nothing to do with Molly. I don't think that Issa went behind Molly's back. And obviously Issa didn't feel, she was like, okay, I'm gonna respect Molly's wishes. But since Nathan reached out, I have, you know, a line here with him and it's not going to ruin anybody's relationship because Nathan and I don't have a relationship currently. So I thought that that was really good of Issa and it was a good way for Nathan to, to get back into her good graces. Yeah, I really do feel like I just, Issa needs to let Molly have her space. I think Molly needs to let Issa have her space. They really need to like come to terms with the fact that maybe they're growing apart. And Issa can focus on her new life, her new goals, and try to find people that are like-minded. And I think that would be good. Um, so that's all for tonight. There's so much to unpack and there's so much more to unpack. So uh, feel free to comment down below what you think. Yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments. Again, thank you so much <laughs> for getting me 250 subscribers. Please share this with people that are that love films, that love series as much as me and you. Um, so share it with your friends, share it with your family. Uh, let me know what other videos uh, you'd like to see from me. And don't forget to like, comment and if you aren't already subscribed subscribe because I am still looking to get to a hundred subscribers um, as soon as possible because this really gives me a lot of joy thank you so much for staying till the end of this video I really really appreciate it and I will see you next